Welcome to this time of reflection. I'm Jeff Marshall Taylor and I'm a member of Christ Church, Jolly Wood. What's in a name? Well, with advancing years, many of us find it's really difficult to remember names and we can be quite forgetful. Uh, names are significant. They mean a great deal to us and they mean a great deal when people recall them and use them. I never understand how some people, though, never make the effort to inquire about someone's name or to learn it. Uh, I think of a curate at Christchurch some years ago who had only been at the, our church for a week and the previous week He'd been at the door of the church after the service, shaking hands with people. And a particular lady, one of many, told him her name. Well, the next week after the morning service, uh, the same lady came up to him and he said, Now, remind me your name. She got really quite angry. Can't you remember it? I told it to you last week. And uh, she was quite cross, unfairly, of course, when there are hundreds of names to become familiar with. But the real essence of that is that names do matter. And um, during my months in hospital, it seemed to me that knowing the names of the other patients and the staff was really important. I remember not long after I'd got there and I was beginning to be less compass, less sort of confused and a bit more compass mentis. There were five people surrounding the end of my bed discussing my progress and future treatment. There were two staff nurses an occupational therapist, a physio, an assistant physio, and a student nurse. And the student nurse had only arrived that morning. And then one of the uh, people around the bed, the occupational therapist, said, that's amazing. You know all our names. Why? How? seemed a strange question, but I said to her, well, I know you have jobs and roles in the NHS. One is a nurse, one is a physio and so on. But the important thing is that you're individuals. And to know your name means that you matter. You matter to me. And hopefully I matter to you. And they all agreed. But knowing people's names can help to create a relationship between you and the other person. And um, one of the nurses was called Mandy, and I made a mistake and called her Maggie. And she got really angry because she said, don't call me Maggie again. I said, oh, I'm sorry. She said, that's the name of my sister-in-law and I can't stand her. So anyway, I didn't make that mistake again. But uh, in my own name, Jeff or Jeffrey in full, is uh, really quite significant to me because uh, nobody really calls me Jeffrey. If people call me Jeffrey, it reminds me of my mother when I was a child telling me off or shouting for me to come and do a job. Jeffrey, she called. And so Jeff is the way 99% uh, of people uh, call me. So there we go. At the BBC, when I worked there, we had a studio manager whose name was Michael. And you could tell the people who knew him because they called him Michael. If anyone would try to be Pally, and called him Mike or Mikey, he didn't like it. So you could tell who really knew him 
by the name that they used. Well, the Bible often places significance on names. In Isaiah 43, verse 1, we, we read this. Do not fear. I have summoned you by name. This is God speaking. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Isn't that wonderful? I've summoned you by name and you are mine. Well, on Good Friday today, we read that Pontius Pilate, after uh, crucifying Jesus, ordered that a, a sign should be put up above him on the cross. And it was a name. This is the King of the Jews. The King of the Jews. A name or title of huge significance. In his ministry, Jesus often addressed people by name. One of my favourite Easter passages is in John's Gospel, chapter 20. Mary Magdalene, having heard about the empty tomb, goes to the garden in which it's situated. She goes early in the morning and she's weeping. As she stood there near the empty tomb, in the morning light, she was aware of somebody in the garden, somebody else. And she thought it was the gardener. And she turned and she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him. Jesus said to her, Mary, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out, Rabboni, meaning teacher. Jesus said, go to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Well, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, she said. Today, Jesus knows each one of us by name. He loves us as he longs for us to be close to him. He calls us by name and he wants us to respond, to be in a relationship with him. As we today in Good Friday reflect on the pain of the cross, we will want to respond to his sacrificial death as he offers to us, each one by name, the opportunity of new life and salvation through him. We can look ahead to Easter Sunday. We can then celebrate Jesus' risen life, which he shares with us each one. Yes, you, whom he knows by name, and me. He knows each of us by name, and he calls us to follow him and serve him in his resurrection, new life and strength. A new life that goes on and on beyond this life into eternity. In John 10, we read these wonderful words. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Not just en masse, but one by one. Remember that story about the 99 sheep and one went off into uh, the desert and got lost and the, and the saviour, the shepherd, 
went off and found the sheep that was lost and brought it back to the fold. Well, when I was a child, my mother used to sing a, a, a chorus to me when there were 90 and 9 that safely lay in the shelter of the fold, but one was lost, and that one was lost, but then Jesus went out and found that lost sheep and brought it home. And that's what he does for us. It's at the heart of the Easter message. Above all, we should rejoice in the name of Jesus, crucified, risen, ascended. So let me end just by saying a happy Easter to you all. I see I've got the Easter egg here. It's a very ancient custom to have them. But of course, it is a symbol of new life. Stillness, the stillness of the egg, and then out of it, if it's a, a, a bird's egg, out of it comes the new life of the chick and flourishes thereafter. That's why we have Easter eggs, to remind us that from the stillness of the two, there bursts the living Lord Jesus, the one who knows us each by name and wants us to be close to him. So a very happy Easter to you all. And now let's pray together. Lord, whose name is above every name, whose resurrection transformed the pain of death to the hope of new life, we praise you that you know each of us by name and we long that you will empower us by your spirit. So we praise you and bless your holy name. Amen. A happy Easter to you all.